Coming up on the DMT 1 to 1 show, episode 79, an interview with Justin Evans, the co-founder of Lander. This week's show is brought to you by Gramophone, a small device that can turn your traditional sound system into a Wi-Fi music player. We thank them for the support of Digital Music Trends. Check out the website on gramophone.com. It's a real pleasure to be here today with Justin Evans from the company Mix Genies, better known for the product Lander. So hi, Justin, and thanks for joining me from Montreal. How's it going? Really good. Nice to speak to you. It's great to have you. And so, uh, first of all, you just uh, uh, came back from South by Southwest. And, and how was your experience there this year? Oh, it was fantastic. It's like uh, one of my favorite years there. I think it was more exciting than ever because, the you know, the last time I was there, we hadn't launched a product yet. And so right. to be there with a product that a lot of people know was a tremendous amount of fun. And so let's talk about the product because uh, I, I suspect that not everybody that's listening to the show knows about you guys. So uh, first of all, uh, tell me a little bit about Mixed Genius and then we can delve into what Lander is. Well, actually, they're becoming the same thing, but uh, we're, we're actually losing the Mixed Genius name and are going to be right. uh, Lander from now on, which is really exciting. We're just making that change right now. but um, So that's a kind of exciting announcement. I think you got the scoop on that. You're the first that's person awesome. that's, that's heard <laughs> that. So that's pretty cool. But um, basically, the company was formed two years ago, two and a bit ago, uh, out of a research group's work from Queen Mary University of London that we're studying... Um, how things like machine learning and uh, and data analysis could be used to make um, make sound engineering tasks more automated. And so, uh, the original body of research was around mixing, and mastering was part that we decided was the most um, e the best place to start commercially, yeah. and especially simply because and and the lander name is is indicative of this. It's it's a lot easier to get a, um, a stereo out file delivered over the internet to deliver something back for people than to upload a ton of, of stems. And so we thought, wow, here's something we can deliver that really solves a big problem for a lot of musicians. It makes people's lives better for musicians and we can do it really, really quickly and easily and, and deliver a great, great quality for people. Um, so we hit it hard and built the product um, about less than a year ago. Uh, launched in May, launched our um, came out of beta in May of last year and started taking payments. And we've we're just approaching like we're just shy of a million songs mastered in that time period. So it's been really awesome. exciting. The adoption's been really great. People, we seem to have hit a problem that people really need solved, yeah. and uh, and are really excited about how it's growing. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know, I, f I feel like uh, from the first time I heard about it, uh, when you when you first launched, it, it's really become a, a much better known uh, as a product. And so, in terms of how people re re you know re receive the the product and the experience, you know, what have you learned over the past year, and uh, what are the ch are the changes that have happened uh, as part of the the product? Well, it's kind of cool. There's two different answers to that question. One is that the product keeps changing, so um, definitely. Uh, there's two sides to what we've learned, and one is the the feedback that we get from our users, which is incredibly valuable and really awesome. And so, we're actually going to be releasing in the next little while a huge upgrade to the whole website that has um, much more on the experience level requests from our users and things that users have needed and things that users want. And we're really excited about that. We have a really nice. vocal user community. Any of our users out there that are listening. Thank, that do talk to us, thank you so much. Anybody that uses it, that wants to talk to us, that doesn't, please go to our support. We listen really deeply, and it changes the product all the time, and it's it's fantastic. Um, so on that side, we've we've learned tons about how people. You know, it's a really interesting world. Like people are using using our system for different things. I think one of the most exciting things for me is learning about the way one of the most common kind of objections or whatever or what separates human mastering engineers from us is people saying well we give you you know we give our clients advice and we let clients know what's wrong with their mixes and stuff and finding out that people are actually using lander that way has been really fascinating we have all these users that do the same song 10 15 20 times right and we're finding out what they're doing is using it almost as a a reflection of their mixing skills and then learning how to mix better and kind of continuing remixing their tracks and so I feel like we've our a tool has unlocked this kind of DIY educational aspect that yeah. we didn't anticipate at all and that's been really thrilling to see that use case and see people using it that way has been really really awesome and obviously um, I would imagine yes, also that, that sorry. sorry go ahead 
No, you go ahead. Uh, I, was, I was also going to say that I would imagine that given that you continue to ingest more music and, you know, you, have, um, you know, millions of tracks that have been mastered, uh, I would imagine that the algorithm also improves w with that sort of process. That's exactly what I was going to say. And so watching the algorithm grow and watching the quality um, shift and, and increase and get more nuanced. I mean, I think the thing that's really exciting to me is where Lander's going to be a year from now, another year from now, a year after that. You know, the more more data we get and the more the system can learn it's and, and the more advanced, you know, we're adapting as, as the system gets better. Um, we have a great team of data people here. We have a great team of music DSP engineers, and everybody is working hard to make this thing incredible. And so it's, you know, the advances we've made in the past year alone are really, really exciting. We're going to be releasing some new updates over the next uh, few months. I think our update cycle is going to be quite exciting. Yeah. And uh, just keeping seeing seeing what's in the lab right now, I can't wait to at least release it on the world. It's pretty great. Yeah, and I can kind of give the, the, sort of the company gives me a, a, the, the same feeling that I had around uh, uh, the Aquanest in terms that it's, it's been put together by sort of people that are on the technical or you know, on the academic side of things, uh, but have managed to create a product out of that. So that that's quite a sort of exciting angle that we don't see as as often as as an entrepreneurial angle purely. Yeah, and I think the Equinest the Equinest kind of comparison is really interesting because I think in some ways, especially what we're doing in terms of how the system listens to music, we're doing something. Uh, akin to Equinest and creating data akin to Equinest is just we're doing it from a purely musical angle and from a like thinking about questions of like how do songs relate to each other in terms of production styles or production elements as opposed to uh, cultural genre data you know I think we're doing something quite unique there and it's really it's I, I really look to Equinest um, as a real inspirational company for us. Yeah, and I guess, you know, you, you touched upon the fact that one of the uh, things that came up when you first launched was the debate around, uh, you know, live engineers versus machines. And uh, from, from that point onwards, have you found engineers that have sort of turned around and said, actually, you know, this is cool for preliminary stages and we still, we know that we're still valuable for the, the final master. And how's that reaction evolved over the last year? For sure, it's changed radically. You know, like, I, I think that we were, um, I, I, one of the most, scary days of my life was the day we launched the product and like I think 20 minutes after we launched there was an engineers mastering forum where they were just like these guys are horrible I want to kill them and, you know like just this rage against what we were trying to do and it was quite I terrifying um, luckily uh, our we served enough of an audience need of people that I think couldn't probably be served who couldn't afford to be served by those kinds of engineers and, and gave those people a, a fighting chance at decent mastering that we've survived that initial blast of hate <laughs> And it's really changed. Um, you know, it's really, really changed. The dialogue's completely changed now. And, and we, um, even on some of the most critical forums, there's like moderators saying, oh, yeah, well, yeah, actually, guys, I use Lander. So I think the use case for, um, I think, you know, the use cases for what Lander can do for people is pretty exciting. We have really famous studios, like the, the classic example that we always use, and I'm so grateful for these guys because they're really willing to to talk about it and have been advocates since the beginning is TRI Studios in California, which is Bob Weir's studio. They've been huge, huge supporters of us. We've done hundreds of songs for them. Um, it's awesome. really exciting. People that have huge back catalogs like that, huge live amounts of music, being able to make something happen really quickly, people that need um, increased workflows, people that can't afford professional mastering. And so, you know, and even engineers, there's a great, great example of this too, a university in California in, uh, I, can't remember, I can get Ian's name after the interview, I've, I can't remember his name fully, Ian Varga, I think, and he's using it to teach his students. So the students actually um, do mixes, compare it against Lander, and basically to pass the course, they have to be able to beat Lander, you know, so it's really great. That's great. And I think this is kind of, as we get better, um, I don't think there's a human versus engineer question at all. I think we're going to make... Um, be a benchmark and and be a great asset for people. We went out to the Ableton was really lovely with us too and, and sent us out to their certified trainers program. We got really great reactions from those people. It was really thrilled to go out because these guys are super qualified, amazing people. Got a lot of interesting feedback from them. It was really well received and people basically saying, yeah, I mean, this is a really, really powerful tool for benchmarking. It's a really powerful tool for, you know, if you're in the studio for, for hours and hours and hours working, you need a reference check. You know, so even top engineers are starting to really warm to what it can do for them. And, yeah. you know, I think with every engine release we, we create, um, 
there's more excitement from the professional community as well as from the amateur one. Yeah, and, and also obviously, you know, it, it saves uh, bands uh, money because uh, ultimately they will end up going to a, a real mastering engineer. But, you know, if they can save themselves from doing three or four trips and being told that this is unworkable or, you know, there's sure. some... I mean, some imagine hours. this, like, I, it's funny, I was sit, sat in at the mastering uh, conference that happened at South by Southwest on the panel there and they were saying well you know I mean it would be ideal for people to be able to come to a mastering engineer like 10 times for one song but no one I mean that's economically unfeasible and I'm like no it's not we got lander for that you yeah. know like it really lets people audition their mixes and I think that you know um, for many people the ability to uh, have a demo sound yeah pretty close to like fully professionally mastered by what Ladder can do for it. We know it's getting people's record deals. We've heard so much from our fans. We know actually exciting people that are even fully releasing records with Lander at this point. So we're pretty pretty excited about what it's saying about the quality that we're achieving. Yeah. And talking about, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, the fact that uh, you have an API program in the prep. And, and so uh, this is an, an important next step because uh, some of the users, that are, the um, listeners of this show, might have used Lander before. So if you go on the site, you can uh, try out the service, you can upload a file, and then you get the sort of mastered version. But on the API side, how does that work and how long has that been active? Uh, I think our first thing went live in, say, maybe late November, early December. And basically, I mean, the API is set up so that Right now, um, if you have a website, so we're, we're really deep in the distribution uh, side of things right now. So distributors like TuneCore, um, on their website, you can basically, as you're uploading your tracks to publish, you can have them hear a mastering preview. And awesome. you know, in the, in the audience world of TuneCore, there's tons of musicians that can't <laughs> afford mastering. Yeah. And what's great is you go to publish your song, you can hear the AB, you can hear how much Lander can do for your music before you pay for anything and then you say okay sure I want that and and publish it and it's crazy we have a like right now we have a 50% conversion rate on all of the people because it's just so obvious wow. what Lander does for you that it's really like okay cool and this is going to be replicated I, I, I would imagine this is what? right it's going to be replicated internationally I would imagine you, you oh yeah, yeah yeah we have 40 partners signed globally already and it's uh, we're just really deep in the process of accelerating the deployments. And the cool thing is that if, you know, for the internationalization side of things, it's not that hard because, you know, you just have to have an upload bin and <laughs> even for yeah. like end users. You know, you know what's really hard about the internationalization, which is really funny, is is actually getting the nuances of the language right. Like, right. It's, we, we work so much. I've learned so much about how challenging translation is and, and how complicated it is to explain nuanced audio concepts to people. As far as I know this one academic, Brian Pardo, who does all this work about, uh, he's really great, does really interesting work about um, uh, qualifying what people mean when they say things like warm or, uh, or bright or whatever, and he does all this machine learning stuff around this. The, the really hilarious thing is warm in five different languages, oh my god, what a nightmare to try and translate that. So getting into all these, like, you know, there's so much vernacular in the music industry and trying to make, I, I'm nerding out a bit on language, but it's pretty wild. Like that's been no, a, one of our biggest challenges for uh, for figuring out how to make Lander work internationally. That, that makes sense. I mean, I, I was thinking about the site itself because, you know, the, the actual, you know, upload and then, you know. Uh, yeah, it's simple. Yeah, it's, it's great. simple, right? Yeah, it's but uh, it's the actual explaining to people what you're doing that, that becomes a, a lot harder. And uh, on, on the front of uh, sort of uh, customizing the, the, the output, uh, um, do you guys have plans of working off genres as well, or uh, like can your algorithm pick up essentially genres and it doesn't actually matter what genre the song is in? You can you can sort of cater for that already. It totally matters what the genre is, right. and I think the the thing is this is kind of what I was saying about Equinest before. Our system is right now doing a pretty um, what's live on the site is doing a pretty rudimentary genre analysis and saying this is kind of this area of music or this yeah. is this area of music. This is really the place where the self-learning gets really amazing. As we learn more, um, that gets more and more granular and more and more cool. So this is where the big improvements come from one engine release to the next is how deep we drill into that. And um, then I think probably, you know, we're looking at offering because the machine learning can generate 
like kind of nearest neighbor multiple variations of stuff. Yeah. We're looking at offering people, say, you know, um, five or six, you know, up to five or six variations of the master that it generates that's based on that data field and like where it sits in relationship to all that, yeah. all the data that we're collecting. No, that's great. And also like the, the, the challenge with that is that uh, if you start offering personalization based on genre, genre is highly personal factor. So exactly. as well, you could have people that class something as country, but actually from an alg algorithm point of view would actually have to be classed as rock so that it, that it, it maximizes the result because there are more guitars, for example, say, but yeah. This is exactly what I was talking about with the Echo Nest thing. Like, you know, the, the interesting thing about country music, like think about country and pop, right? In the past 20 years, you know, a Taylor Swift album from the like early stage of her career sounds to me pretty pop music. It doesn't sound country per se. Yeah. And from a musical production aspect would be produced as a pop record more than as a, you know, Hank Williams record. Yeah. So, and and maybe a you know contemporary folk person is going to be produced more like a Hank Williams record than than it would be like a Taylor Swift record. So the thing for us is we're not trying to understand genre per se, and the way that we're thinking about music and that we're thinking about the machine learning, thinking about music, is is really different than that. And so genre isn't so much a concern as much as you know how can we you know, the same way a mastering engineer would pick a reference track right like you're like oh you know you talk with the band is this what you want to sound like is this what you want to sound like our system's trying to create that reference area that the music listens that the music sits in yeah and and will produce it relative to that absolutely uh, looking at uh, well, one of the fields that is quite interesting for me as a, as a producer of audio uh, is uh, that of also audio restoration because uh, there's plugins mm -hmm. out there that are like thousands of dollars it's so expensive to get really good audio restoration is that yeah. something that you ever looked at I know it's a very different proposition from what you guys do because it's all based on of course musical uh, analysis and understanding how the mastering process will affect the end, 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 end game but uh, it could potentially be a big market so I was wondering if you guys ever looked into that I will very quietly smile in relationship right. to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, moving on, why uh, uh, sort of Montreal? Uh, how, how did that come about? And, and, and uh, are you finding it easy to move people there if you need to have people uh, there? Or do you have teams uh, around the world that, that work on the product? This is a pretty cool story. So um, first, the answering the question about the is it easy to move people here? It's been easy to move people here. I think all of them have particularly hated this winter because we've been the coldest city in the world and had the <laughs> coldest uh, winter on record in the yeah. history of Montreal. So I feel really bad for the people that have moved here this year. But they've done the ground, right? Other than that, it's pretty great. Uh, unbelievably cold this year. It's crazy. So the Brits and, and folks from warmer climates are, are freaking out a little bit right now. So that's funny. But uh, Montreal is a great place to to do this in, um, I, my own personal story is I've been a musician, I moved in to Montreal in the 90s to be a musician here and then um, also have had a lot of experience in digital, uh, digital marketing and digital uh, product creation and there's an, like a really incredible music scene here so when I co-founded the company, um, I basically took the research from the Queen Mary uh, people and brought it back to my music community here and we're really blessed in Montreal we have one of the best indie music scenes in the world of course with bands like Arcade Fire, Godspeed You Black Emperor, you know all these great bands we also have an incredible techno scene like Tiga um, you know there's there's so much great 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 music here incredible jazz scene incredible classical music scene Kent Nagano you know like really it's really one of the world's best music scenes and it's also an incredibly generous and collaborative music scene so being able to bring the technology here our Beautis records is also incredibly awesome and we're super supportive early on so being able to bring what we had here and have all these really cool musicians come in and listen and validate it and be like, oh yeah, well actually this is a bigger problem than this and we really need this solved and oh my god, if you could yeah. do this. So we had kind of the most organic and and amazing uh, focus community to really develop the product in and, yeah. and I don't think... Uh, I don't think there could be a better city in the world to make a product like this, and we've been extremely, extremely uh, blessed by the scene here. So it made so much sense to build it here, and sure. um, you know, brought people here, 
we have deep, deep connections with all the music festivals here. We have deep connections with all the musicians. It's so fun being at South by and like hanging out with the road crew of the Montreal music people that we meet yeah. at every conference. You know, it's really nice. So that's a big part of the reason. That's great. And also, I would imagine because there aren't that many music startups, you're not, you know, facing competition or from. 20 other startups that are trying to get the attention of bands from various angles obviously not your angle because you're pretty unique but you know if you were in LA or San Francisco there'd be people trying to sell the marketing services and all sorts of other things and, and in Montreal you probably have the feel to yourself and so to a certain extent in terms of the attention that you can you can ask of people even more than that I mean that's a huge part but even more than that we also have an incredible incredible academic uh, world here with Kermit and McGill and right. Concordia's new media program and you know and tons of musicians that are super excited to work on a project like this so you know like HR for us is pretty easy and having incredible conversations with some of the brightest minds in the industry is like calling someone and saying hey you want to go for a beer and talk about this crazy thing that we're doing and and you know there's just so many incredible people it's a really really fertile environment that's awesome and, yeah. and obviously you know it's a uh it's a service that I think is going to is going to be interesting from various perspectives because obviously you're you're pointing at musicians but as I said there's a lot of interesting applications from all sorts of points of view uh, even live live production and, and all sorts of interesting things that that, that could go into it because uh, I always face the uh, issue of having to fiddle with all my controls here I've got a mixing desk right next to me where I'm, I'm trying to make sure that the levels are okay I still master the recording at the end of the podcast but I try to uh, get the levels roughly right whilst I'm recording and, and make sure that there's no major problems because they take ages to fix after I've recorded it. So <laughs> it's definitely... I think we're going to be able to do some miracles for you. I'm pretty <laughs> excited about that. Future roadmap stuff's pretty exciting for that. Excellent, excellent. And well, Justin, uh, finally, just, uh, just to, to finish up on, on, on South by, uh, sort of uh, how, how do you see that conference evolving and, and uh, uh, you know, do, do you think that it can it can stay where it is? We've seen a lot of different opinions uh, this year around uh, whether uh, you know the fact that it was maybe a little bit quieter, but in a good way because it was most focused on, on smaller bands. It was less massive acts going. Do you feel like mm -hmm. it's got the same buzz it had before, and, and are bands excited to go back that have been this year? I feel like it's an interesting question. I feel like my the first few days I was there, um, I was in the. The, the kind of transition from the, the the bridge days. So I spoke on a panel in the day between interactive and music where they overlap. Yeah. It's like Tuesday and, or Wednesday, right? Pardon me? It's Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, that they overlap. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, and right. So did a, did a speak that day, and it was pretty... Um, I was a little concerned. The interactive was, was great, as it always is. It feels like it's overwhelmed the music a little bit. Um, the first couple of days in the music, I was really, huh, is this, it, it felt quite, um, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit like the criticisms were, were valid. By the end of the week, you know, it was such an amazing experience. And you, I, I just had met so many incredible people and so much good stuff and, and so many good bands I'd seen that I was like, oh yeah, this thing, maybe this is going to slow down for a couple of years, but yeah. it's still really, really vibrant and really healthy and really alive. And, you know, for me personally, I'm into more marginal music than mainstream music anyway. So I saw stuff that blew my mind and discovered a whole bunch of great new music and was really satisfied by it. So That's it was awesome. a great conference for me. That's awesome. Man. And also like to a certain extent, I don't think that, you know, if, if we're looking at, at the sort of practical uh, point of view of a brand that paid X amount of money for Prince to go and do a gig last year at South by to mm -hmm. pro probably 400 people, it's like, what was the actual return on that? And if they looked at the figures, you know, six months later, and they were trying to figure out what benefits we get from having Prince go to South by and pay him however much money and, and, and to have a very small crowd or the same for the Depeche Mode or, or, or other bands that did the same. And so I guess, you know, to a certain extent, there may be a a bit of a pullback because they realized that it doesn't make sense to pay millions of dollars to send these big acts when there's already 2,000 bands in town and, yeah. and that's that's a good thing you know I think as, as the more we can focus on those new up-and-coming bands the better I think one of the other things I really really loved about it this year is the the the, the multiplicity of the experience you know like we were you know, one afternoon we're recording Action Bronson for for some, for a, a partnership with Crave Online, and then we're then I'm at Moon Duo, like this psych band, and then I'm at the PC Music Showcase, and like just seeing all, all the different 
cultures of those yeah. different spaces and being like, wow, these are radically different groups of people and they're all walking down Sixth Avenue together and it's yeah. like crazy that that works. You know, it's like really, uh, it's pretty wonderful. It's uh, That was a really great part of the experience. Yeah, it's also when it's like hip hop in one venue and that next door is like uh, metal and then it's like indie rock and then folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of country crazy, on the other, on the crazy. Side, yeah. And all so different cultures and then there's this weird blend and like you walk into a bar and you see some genre music you never pick and you're totally into it, you know? Yeah. It's really great. And well, uh, Justin, it was such a pleasure having you today. And once again, I would direct people to go and check out Lander, L A N D R dot com. And you can uh, check out the service if you have any uh, music that you never ended up mastering, or if you got some yeah. old demos from your know, from your old band sitting sitting around. Just just try it out and, and see how see how it sounds. Uh, Justin, thanks so much for your time, and uh, uh, I'm sure we'll speak soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Anytime. It's a real pleasure talking to you. And thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show. It comes out every now and again, not every week anymore, but uh, uh, you can keep an eye on the feed and uh, you'll find everything on digitalmusictrends.com and click through to the DMT One to One show links. Thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week and until uh, next time. If you enjoyed watching or listening to the show and would like to find more, head on to digitalmusictrends.com. <laughs>